episode of Blast Slash Chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Hello. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, am I the stranger? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I haven't missed a single one. You haven't missed a single one. It's true. Um, so I've only not missed a single one. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't missed a single one that you've been participating in. <laughs> <laughs> so for this episode of Slash Out Podcast, as you see above me, we have special guest episode. Yay! Yay! Our special guest Woo! is Chibo Shofu. And Chibo, Hi. can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? What's going on? What do you do? Can you not be a stranger? There we go. Okay. Um, I am a student and a part-time worker, and I play lots of video games, specifically lots of League of Legends and or Hearthstone and or Steam games, but mostly the first two. And I'm around Twitch a lot, and most of you know me, uh, if you're on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, it's great to have you here. It's... Cheers. This face is like, she didn't expect me to actually, you know, Support him being here, did you? No, Scared no. Away. <laughs> eh, but. No, nah, it's great having you here, especially uh -huh. considering our topic tonight. Oh, I, I our, 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 do you know our topic tonight? I might have spoiled it for him. Oh God, damn it, Shibo! <laughs> yes. Damn it, Shibo! Oh, and hide the secrets. Ah, uh, but anywho. um, the reason we don't have the rest of our group tonight is one. Teogre is sick. No. Two, Cardinal is currently at work. Boo. Three, Raytog is currently without good internet. Oh, he that's had, the worst. He had to move, and when he moved, he ended up going to a location that had pretty much dial-up internet. Why did he do that? Um... Because he had to vacate the premise of where he was previously living. Okay, so he didn't him. choose to go to this new place. Oh, uh, no, not quite, no. Good, okay, because I'm like, one of the most important things to any house that you find is to make sure it has good internet. Yeah. It's more important than running water. It's it's true. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you can share with water bottles. Or suck. <laughs> or suck. <laughs> As the topic of discussion earlier, right before we went live, was stealth poops. But no, poops suck. <laughs> poops suck. That's when you're playing a competitive game or hardcore playing in like potatoing an MMO, and there's no time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so you just take a sock and you poop in it. Um, and you keep healing or whatever you're doing. One handed. And then, like you forget that it's in the sock. And when you lose the sock. <laughs> Just use it next time. Just save it. <laughs> Multiple times. I don't know about you, but my socks are tidy and my shits are big. <laughs> <laughs> my socks are huge. So my shits are small, I guess. Eh, let's not go into detail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so as tradition of our slash chat episodes. We go around in a little circle jerk and we say what we've what? been up to this whoa, week. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. I'll be the circle jerk. I just met this guy. No. <laughs> no, you haven't. Well I don't know him as well as I do. Does that mean does that mean you don't want a circle jerk? No, not right now. Okay. <laughs> So, as our oh, guest of honor, Alex, you get back seat for right now. <laughs> Shibo, what have you been up to this week? Oh, okay, that's fine. I'll wait. Lots and lots of League of Legends. Like, tons of it. Like, way too much of it. I went on a 14-win streak, and then a 7-loss streak, and then an 8-win streak, and then when it really mattered, I lost a few games again. But it's really, it's good. It's, <laughs> it's, been, great. it's been League, Sleep, and School. 
and I ate too and pooped. It's good. I just followed you on Twitter, by the way. Shibo. Oh, thank you. So that was it. That's all. That's, like, that's le- it. Legends I mean, and shits. And school, oh, right? Nice. But that's a given. That's nothing new. Well, it is new, but it's nothing new. What about the what thing you have in your hand? Or rather, oh, yeah. hey, that? that's a thing. <laughs> it was my birthday last week. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I and guess. this was given to me for my birthday by a certain someone, and it's amazing. It's a Poro from League of Legends. It's awesome, and I love it. So, Alex, what have you been up to this week? That's actually a really cool thing right there, the the, 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 the plush thing. Uh-huh. Is, is it a bird? Yeah, it's a bird. Okay. No, it's a Poro. What? I can't find where its mouth is. It Tongue. Oh. <laughs> Oh, horn. I thought it was like that was a beak. No, no, puffball, horn, tongue. Okay, puffball. I'm like, which direction should I look at? This? I want one. I'd pay for money for one of those. Oh, would you? Yeah. I can't see that. It's all blurry. Post I'll the later. Um, for me, uh, it's been a pretty busy week because uh, on Saturday was my last day at my part-time job because uh, I'm moving to a new, better job, which started today. Full-time, $15 an hour, a nice. writing job. So I'm like, I think that's Ooh, What's the writing job? What are you writing? Uh, 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 kind of product descriptions for a uh, sales company. Oh, okay. It's local. It's like, it's just about half hour drive, uh, flex hours, benefits. It's something I can do. And I'm like, it's okay. I mean, my, my first job uh, here in town, which is great. And which means that I can finally start looking for a better place to live, which would yeah. be amazing. And, and uh, ideally I'd want to get my, my partner in crime Matt, what to fuck in on this because that would make us a lot easier when we're trying to make our videos. So it's been a lot of moving and shaking as far as that goes. Uh, the job today was mostly just reading, which is kind of boring for eight hours, but uh, I'm actually going to, by the end of the week, I'm going to be getting on, on that. So it's like research on how to write product descriptions. Well, the, this was just sort of a little bit of a training material. It's mostly like, how do we read websites? And we, you know, you read them a certain way in comparison to how you read, say, a newspaper or something like that. I mean, yeah. it's interesting, but it's you know, just for eight hours, you eventually just start falling asleep. Yeah. But uh, this is just a really good job. I like having a, a writing job that's on site because I can actually talk to people. And I'm like one of the youngest people on staff. Everyone else is sort of like a lot older than me. The youngest person on staff is 23 and I'm 25. So mm-hmm. I see all these people who are like in their 30s and 40s and <clears throat> 60s. And I'm like, oh my God, how did I get this job? But uh, they, they've been really supportive of me, which is great because I'm like, a good job, good paying job with benefits. I can finally start looking around for places to live out there. It's not that far and it would be close to where my friend Matt would be going to school. So that'd be great. As far as the games go, uh, I've kind of been jumping around, uh, uh, recording, can- uh, recording some video for the next video. Um, I've also been playing a little bit of this finally Yay. stopped sucking for a while. <clears throat> so, because uh, this is a game where there's no gray area. You're either doing amazing and you love it, or you're doing crappy and you hate it. That's how Bloodborne works. But uh, finally making progress, you, you know, you feel good. You're like, yes, I can do it. But then you got to take a break. You cannot play that in long, long periods of time unless you're a psycho. Other than that, uh, doing the stream, did a huge persona session. I got on a roll last night, so I just kind of cranked out like four hours of it. And then Cry was there the whole time, and I'm just like, okay, so I finish the dungeon, level up the right way, and then the story's starting to pick up, and I'm like, oh, Yuki go, Yuki go. And then Risei starts hitting on me, and then you see the creepy nurse rapist, and then you start 
seeing the, uh, uh, the, just this old lady who says she's death. And I'm like, whoa, why are you death? Uh, did some Beyond Good and Evil on Saturday, kind of did some bits and pieces. I made some videos uh, with Matt. Didn't really watch much anime. I still haven't finished Log Horizon. I know there's one more episode, but I'm thinking like this, the ending of this season doesn't, isn't looking to be as good as the ending of the last season, just because, I mean, I'm at the part where, you know, you see Sheer A, and he's like gonna do his glasses and then he stops and I'm like, oh, I get it. Cause he's not, cause he's not confident. He's not, so he's hesitant. And just seeing him out of that element is, <clears throat> you, you want him to be in his demon in glasses mode. Cause when he's not in that mode, you're just sort of like, you don't like seeing him like that. It makes you look it's like- painful. It's, yeah, it it's makes like it cringy. look like, like you're just watching someone fail right in front of you. I still like his character and I'm I'm still agreeing with a lot with what Kat and the others kind of said. This is getting super, super layered. There's a lot that they're gonna have to try and wrap up whenever the third season, because this is obviously gonna get a third season. I have to disagree with that. I don't think it's very layered. I think there is one thing that is centralized and causing all of the other things, and it's like it all relates to this one thing that we haven't been shown yet. And then when it shows it, it'll all be so obvious. I mean, there I'm aren't sure really a whole bunch of different stories. It's all just one story that we haven't been shown. The I'm end. sure they will. I just have no idea how they're going to do it. That's really the thing. I mean, I don't think it's going to, you know, just completely fall apart. But I just think that it's starting, I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith in them. I think that once they, they, they introduce the whole secret of the, um, I forgot what they're called. The, the thing that Roy two were and then the other things, they, they introduced them very late in the second season. So you're kind of still sort of trying to come to grips with that. It, it just seems like getting complex. I really want to go back to Kill a Kill at some point. And I know that all these new anime episode, uh, series have come out. I, oh shit. I can't understand what my husband is saying is. It should be episode is, wait, two. No, that's only for premium. Okay. Well, I'll just look at that. Soon. That's okay. I'll that? just do it when they, you know, the premium episodes are eventually captured and then uploaded to other websites for free. So I'll just watch them there. And not support the anime I love. I'm sorry. Anyway. I mean, I don't like this. Or I just wait. I mean, the good thing about Kill Hot Kill is it's it's all it's already up there. Uh, and, and usually I don't watch the my husband thing until like it's already free. And then there, there's like pre-order this magical warfare complete. You mean Shakugan no Shana, because that looks exactly like Shakugan no Shana. It's not even remotely different from Shakugan no Shana. And I like Shakugan no Shana. It's a fucking awesome anime. What about Up Nice Sisters? Oh my God. What? <laughs> don't, don't. Just don't. Just, just don't. No, what'd you say? I want to know now. Actually, it would be right up Alex's boat. Wait, right up his boat. What are you right talking about? I don't know what you're talking about? Ebony sisters. Eb Ebony sisters. Abunai. 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 What the fuck is that? Now I gotta look it up. <laughs> is it A? Like the letter A? Yeah, A B U N A I. Yeah, it's not sisters. there. I gotta look it up. Here, there we go. Okay, just all right, like I found it. it. I linked it. Why is that not on Crunchyroll? Oh, there it is. Now it is. It is. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm not logged in. So it says the content may be inappropriate for some people. <laughs> I think that tells me all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, just maybe. Yeah, I'm not. Anyway, how was your week, Kat? <laughs> yeah. Thanks yeah. for derailing my entire show, though, Shiva. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my week has consisted of sleep, uh, working on my new Vampire the Masquerade character. Oh my god, it's giving me such a headache. Such a headache. Um, I, the, duh. I'm on like page three of writing her backstory. 
oh that's right you have to like write a whole big yeah. essay backstory okay. and i i still have like four or five bullet points left of her history <clears throat> so it's probably it's a lerp right uh-huh VTM's alert or um we're actually gonna do tabletop version of it um it has the same premise as larp just instead of rock paper scissors you're using 10 sided die yeah <clears throat> so uh <laughs> thanks iron wolf thanks i didn't know you were that kind of nerd <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being that kind of nerd i like being that kind of nerd thank you very much but um no, it. It's... This anime looks like shit. Like total, <laughs> total. I'm not even gonna watch it. <laughs> fucking garbage. It's only it's three like minutes. IMBU level shit. You can throw away three minutes of your life, right? I'm not watching that. <laughs> I have some dignity left. Oh, that's the problem. I'll watch <laughs> nasty porn, but I will not watch bad <clears throat> CG pieces of crap shows like that. I have standards. Oh, oh, I didn't notice the heart, but it's okay, I will forgive you. <laughs> um, but no, so with like the tabletop, it's kind of forcing roleplay on people uh, with an E, not an L. Um, because we've done so much of the LARP, a lot of us are so used to just the roleplay aspect of the LARP that we're just going to be like, nope force it on people and be like by the way you're you're role playing with us like rawr. like get in character and, now and, yeah and uh so <laughs> nothing wrong with that no no Love nothing that. at all uh backstories uh downtimes are going to be written um you get bonus xp for being like in character the whole time so whether it's like with the costume that's kind of cool i, I like that idea well, and, that's Earth's on right mm, now, too. Huh? We get we get bonus XP for role playing bonuses and hero bonuses. And... Yeah. Oh yeah. It convinces you to stay in character and act naturally in that character. I of think. course, you can make little out of character comments or questions. Yeah. I know, but I, I, but, I think it's a good yeah. way to get people to be their character better. Yes, <laughs> I do have glow in the dark dice already. They are steampunk dice. Nice. And they do glow in the dark. Beautiful. Yes, they're Save awesome. Throw. What? I said saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Iron Wolf, thank you for that host. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so like, if you don't want to write a backstory, if you don't want to write downtime, that's fine. But people who do are going to get more experience. And I know at least three out of five people at our table, well, actually, no, four out of five people at our table, are going to write downtime and going to write backstories. So, like, why not put a little bit of an effort into it and be like, here's, even if it's just a page. Um, <clears throat> we have two brand new people who have never even done, like, that many role-playing games or that many, uh, Dice game, what? I feel so bad for them. I know. I know. It's forcing them to write something is just going to, like, I think it's going to ruin it for them. Well. I think it would be better if you just made them imagine their characters. And then, like, later on when they're more into it, they can start writing. But, like, well, kind of the, try the to be the is kind first. of, like, giving leeway for that, though. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I would be five pages. Because he knows I can write it. Josh would be five pages because he knows Josh can write it. And <clears throat> at that point, like, with Bert and Kenny, like, if they just wrote, like, a paragraph, he's going to give the same amount of experience mm -hmm. based on player level versus roleplay level. And it's going to, there's a, a, like, a curve, essentially. Okay. So it's not you have to write five pages. You have to write. It's like what you're comfortable with, he's going to give you that. So, but do it. Hmm? But do it. But do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. 
No, it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting right now. I I had to go back to eighteen eighty no eighteen seventies in London and figure out the history. Then I went to eighteen eighties in London, figure out the history. Eighteen eighty eight with Jack the Ripper in London. Then I had to do the history of France in eighteen ninety. Then history of Spain in eighteen ninety five. Over to America in 1925, then dealing with politics in VTM from 1825 to 1857, then from eight, or sorry, 1957, and then 1957 to 1999, to then 1999 to 2015. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, it partially was, like, par- the the research of it was, like, amazing to me. I'm like, holy shit, I get to learn the backstory of stuff, I get to learn a bit of history, and it's actually fun, compared to, oh shit, I'm sitting here learning about history. It's, like, VTM mixed with, like, actual, like, history. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. It's kind of like Assassin's Creed, honestly. You got the game with the history. Yeah. So... <clears throat> see it yep but yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun that's what i've been doing most of this week been catching up on a lot of anime started watching kuroko no basket aka bullshit basketball anime and it i'm on second season now and we haven't seen her since (laughs) pretty much I saw a bumper sticker on my way to school that reminded me of that. Oh? Sports animes ruin lives. <laughs> it was the bumper sticker. Really? Yes. Sports animes ruin lives. That... That's what it said. Why didn't you take a picture of it? Okay. I was going to. They actually parked pretty close to me. I could have. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> How did I don't you? know. I was tired. Pixar it was, was 5.30 a.m., okay? Pixar it didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah so it, it, it's been it's been an interesting week um uh, saw steve for easter had easter with my sister well actually my dad then my sister then went to steve's and then came home and crashed which i actually wasn't feeling well sunday night and i like crashed out until the obligatory conversation monday so um so yeah, that was that was my week. Pretty eventful. A lot of writing. But this isn't my character sheet, but this is a VTM character sheet and look at all that information. There's so much information. I can't handle that much information. It's crazy. Well, you you technically get like the same amount of information playing Earth Dawn. It's just Earth Dawn is more. I don't want to say player friendly, but like your choices as a player, like there's more player choices. With VTM, everything you see on that character is everything your character can have. It's like all the skills are listed, all the attributes are listed. Um, all the knowledges are listed. Essentially, like, there is, like, sub-customization, like, specialized knowledge and specialized, like, abilities. But, like, most of the time, that's the only sheet you're gonna need. At all. Um, now the rulebook is, like, that thick. Like, the rulebook for VTM is literally twice the size of, like, two normal Earthon books. Oof. Yeah. It's crazy. So... But yes, instead, oh, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. And we probably won't start this week. We'll probably start next, according to people's schedules. So we'll see. Super exciting. On to topic. <laughs> so I started changing slash chat podcast around just a little bit by doing um generalized topics um 
But it's more of options to tell a story. Uh, yeah, it's true. Iron Wolf, that's completely true. Most of the stuff in there is fluff. Um, so, for a slash chat, uh, people who know, like, we usually do our news episodes. And every person gets a news topic, blah, blah, blah. Take that, crumble it up, throw it out the goddamn fucking window. Because we're changing it up. Oh, this is going to be good time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. This week's topic is competitive gaming. Um, part of the... don't what? Don't the <laughs> Go ahead, continue. <laughs> you just totally French kissed the poor. <laughs> did not. <laughs> yeah. You... <laughs> Fun. You totally just did. I'm listening. The I, topic. I, I, right but you just totally french kissed that poor poro no yeah no yeah i didn't know such thing yeah you did we're talking I, I about competitive gaming i had i had about? video proof there's we're not there's no video here how can the video be real if our eyes aren't real <laughs> on that no on that topic competitive gaming um <laughs> It, this is a discussion, and this is actually partly why I brought Chibo on as our first guest for Slash Chat Podcast. Um, as you can tell by his his week <laughs> of League of Legends, we're going mm -hmm. to be talking about competitive competitive gaming, whether it be like sport gaming or just gaming with friends and fighting games, uh, along the topics of anything that you can consider competitive including raiding and MMOs. It's competitive. It's, it's competitive. racy. So, yeah. I'm going to start by asking, do you two think that competitive gaming is useful or harmful? To whom? To, to the player. I mean, it's, it's no... It's no more useful or harmful than say any other competitive you know like something like a tournament level chess tournament level any sort of game i mean now um i think it's useful because you know video games do have a competitive element to them they've had that since the very beginning so a game that you know some games are more focused around competition than others and i think that the ones that do focus a lot on competition uh, mobas uh, fighting games even uh you know team-based shooters there's a high level of competition there and i think that those when you have that tournament level or competitive environment they really start to see the best in them so i think you know, it depends on the game, but for the most part, I think that competitive gaming in the sense that we're talking about has a very important place, I'd say. Uh, as far as helpful or harmful, I would say it could be either depending on who the player is. Um, for myself, it's kind of a little bit of both. It's helpful because I could my mental... Um, like my 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 how I how I math see I can't English but I can math <laughs> how how I math to the fact that I've been competitive gaming and, and doing these logic puzzles since I was a lot younger. However, it's also harmful because me and ninety nine percent of the other people playing these games, which is a whole lot of people, we it, it sucks you in because it makes you think you're good at the game. And then as soon as you start thinking you're really good at the game, it punches you in the gut, gives you somebody that's just a little bit better. And then you just want to be better than that guy. And once you're better than that guy, you think you're good at the game. And then it gives you another guy that's a little bit better. <laughs> and so in that way, it's like really addicting. And so it could be bad because these people never get pro level. They never get to where it's actually like a good thing for them. Uh, but they think they're really... <laughs> He muted himself. <laughs> I don't know that was a hockey. <laughs> but they think they're really good. And, and and so that they keep playing and then they like then there's, you know, the salty stuff where you get all this confidence and you think you're better than your entire team, you're better than everybody in the world, and then you're 
your teammate messes up somehow and then you blame everything on them and you start yelling at each other and then you start getting angry in real life and then you start, you know, beating your pets and stuff. <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah it can be helpful or harmful helpful or harmful hello the agency is coming to repo the stream hello agency hello agency hello agent snow hello luna stardust hello hindsight thank you guys for stopping in i i i just have to ask like what are they repoing though because i'm thinking repo the genetic opera and i'm like i like my organs Thank you. I like them. <laughs> but hello, guys. Thank you for that raid. Um, we're going to do a... Give you a Shh, Chaos Cat didn't catch that. <clears throat> what? Shh. No, nothing. Go on. <sighs> and... You, wait, what? You actually know what Repo the Genetic Opera is? Fuck yeah! My sister loves that. Um, actually, I was working with uh, a couple of people to start running a shadow cast of that. I was, I was actually going to <clears throat> playing Amber Sweet. Go figure. Mm hmm. Who doesn't know what repo is? There's a lot of people that think repo men, which is a ripoff movie. But anyhow. Um, <laughs> he's also mine, though. I don't know how I feel about his animal beating ways. <laughs> That's the part that cat didn't catch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do think it, it falls to moderation. I really do. Um, whether competitive gaming is useful or harmful. Um, in moderation, I think any game can be useful or harmful. Like people who have died playing MMOs. Or oh, people... Gosh. Like the release, I think, uh, five days after release of Diablo 3, somebody in Japan or Korea was playing it since the release. Right. And died playing it. Yeah. Um, now, helpful, I mean, it, it can build team skills, it can build, like, morale, it can give you self-confidence, it can help you, like, be a better thinker, like, critically thinking, thinking on your feet, stuff like that, um, but again, moderation, um, with, I, I like, I've been all over the spectrum. I've played my MOBAs, I've done my raids, I've also been the casual player. And it, it kind of falls down to, yes, what is the player doing that is either helpful or harmful? Um, we're actually going to talk on a League Legend. A league, like, bracket. Like, I can't... Damn it, Chibo, you're affecting my English. <laughs> English. <laughs> um, like a, a league bracket, like with the pro players, with <laughs> people that are going to these tournaments, and that's all they're doing. Now, is that helpful or is that harmful? Considering most of the people that are doing these esport tournaments are under the age of 18, they're devoting their lives to a single game. Hmm. That's where I say it's that there's there's the people it's harmful for because that whole addicting oh I'm so I'm so I'm so good I'm so good and then I'm not as good as this guy oh no I'm better and I'm so good I'm so good really addicting to some people um, but I think the people who are actually making a living off of this they're really enjoying themselves doing it are they very helpful the the ones that are are is I'm I'm referring to the ones that actually enjoy them enjoy doing it you know there are a few people that don't enjoy it and that's happened a couple times where people retire because they're not enjoying it or they move to coaching because they don't want to deal with the stress of wins and losses but i don't know i think it's it's helpful to the players but it's far more helpful to the viewers alex hmm? he's not even paying attention <laughs> no, 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 no sorry i got distracted by something on the screen sorry no you're Shame. fine 
No, no. You, what, you need my opinion on something? I well, we're going around the table. We're kind of. Well, what was the what was the topic in general? We're still on helpful, harmful. Uh, we're on helpful, really? harmful, but on a tournament, people making a living from this, devoting their lives to it. Level of like pro players. <clears throat> Well, I think that the point you made, how, you know, they got to dedicate a lot of time to that game. So they really don't get to experience any others. And um, it's the same way that, you know, in that regard, it's very similar to any sort of athletic sport because you need, to, as far as managing how much focus you put on it as opposed to other things. Mm -hmm. Um. And it, I don't know, because that is a pretty heavy negative, and I'm trying to think about, you know, can that be offset? But I mean, we day, can go with competitive gaming on a sports aspect, like baseball, basketball, um, because it's gaming too. It, it's gaming too, but also with that, like, if we didn't have already those kind of sports, would we have esports? Who knows? Right. That's a big if. Um, <clears throat> I just a, I I would say that real sports are often more harmful than esports would be in the professional level um, because there's risk of uh, actual injury. There's, there's risk of actual injury. I guess that, that's a big part, actually, in football. Like People will die at the age of 40 or 45 because they have brain injury. They have permanent brain damage every time they get hit. And then, you know, people in baseball doing steroids and stuff. So you don't really see that kind of stuff in esports. You, you do, but on a different level. Um it's it's a different level also a minor level because when you look at how many times do or how many times a day did these people I, I don't want to just say kids but these people sit in front of a computer they're they're sitting they're working on this and that's almost as bad as me saying I sit at the computer like 12 hours a day five days a week and turn into a potato and turn into a potato it it's it's kind of still that level of harmful not so much for injuries based on like athleticism but m muscle atrophy but the opposite end of the spectrum like the direct opposite end of the spectrum now, but it's not like people sit here and play 14 hours a day and sleep eight you know they they're do, the though. professional players the the professional players especially the ones who have lasted since season one of league of legends they they have life coaches who sit there and tell them okay now this is what you eat and now this is when you work out physical workout go for a jog lift weights and then right. this is when you practice and then this is when you watch and conversate so they they have people that are monitoring their lives and keeping them healthy so you don't really have the problem of people sitting here for 14 hours and sleeping for eight so at, at a very competitive level but at before that, that it that's happens. what i'm about to say though at that point <clears throat> the higher you go up the healthier it is for those people who are in mid-range like they're probably the least healthiest because mm -hmm. they're devoting a whole bunch of time to something that they'll never succeed at and they're atrophying their muscles doing it because right. they're not they're 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 putting it over everything else and that's scurry, but it happens. Most people will never even be seen. Hmm? Hmm. Hey, it is true that esports is more of something you can learn. And there's been, I've, I've heard many times, many times, there is a natural talent that you can have doing esports, but then there's also the you do it so much that it just becomes twitch reflex um well I, I mean they say you know you put what is it a thousand or ten thousand hours into something and then you're you're gonna be at good a at it, no you're, you're gonna be at a professional level 
Yeah. And I disagree with saying that people can train and train and train and never be competitive at any sport. You can be competitive at anything you want with enough dedication. Anybody, you know, mm -hmm. unless you're missing a couple limbs. And even those people, you know, you've seen people like that. Oh, yeah. Get competitive. So I think that's an unfair thing to say. There's <clears throat> physical sports and there's mental sports. Keep them separate. Yes, yes and no. I mean, really, you. it's like a Venn diagram, though. It really is. Like, you have the things that are in between, like the dedication to the game, the time practiced, the learning of it. Then you have, like, in, in general, the mental aspect of competitive in general. Um, the mental aspect of being competitive in general is the fact that you're always looking at the opponent. You're n you're always like kind of looking for the next game. You're you're there because it's competitive. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, um, but y it's still it's a Venn diagram. Like you're still gonna have things that overlap. I think it's unfair to say that physical sports are not mental. Right. I mean, and football and soccer and hockey, physical. extremely mental, almost completely mental. You know, you have to be physically fit to do them, but it's strategy that wins out in the end. And for esports as well, you know, um, StarCraft, you will not be a great player unless you have a high APM. And that is completely physical. That's speed, like hand yeah. dexterity. And then, uh, you know, twitch reflex and stuff. That's all physical. So they're, they're, they're both physical. And, and yeah. I'm not trying to say like chess is physical. Chess is not physical. That's an example of a mental sport. But League of Legends is not chess. They're, they're different. One requires more than the other. In well, yeah, I mean, 100%. I say keep esports out of the Olympics. I'll keep ping pong out of the Olympics. It barely requires any physical attribution. It's well, here's the thing. I agree that there is physical interaction and mental interaction in both, but there is a clear, clear difference. I do not think that say something, you know, the demand, I'm going to say this right now, playing Starcraft is not going to be as physically taxing on you as hundred meter dash. Right. It's the level of physicality that you need because I understand because if you're using your hand, arm, and shoulder, that is physical, but that's not physical enough for the Olympics. Yeah, no. I would say the thing that keeps it out of the Olympics the most because there are the Olympics have always been. I'm not saying esports should be in the Olympics at all. I'm not saying chess should be in the Olympics. It definitely shouldn't, because Olympics are a show of physical strength. 100 meter dash has almost no strategy except for the way you move your body, and you just that's that's muscle memory. It's There's a little you know. bit of strategy, not nearly as much. Running as Starcraft, forward as fast as you can, but you need to know. You know, you need to move into a certain lane at a certain time to get in front of someone. At the 100 meter dash? It, he's talking dash. literally straight line. I'm talking straight line. 100 meter dash goes as fast as you can. You you need, you, you Usain that, Bolt. That's a little, a little bit of a strategy just so you know how fast you need to go at one point and how you're able to um, pace yourself. But, you know, compared to something like StarCraft, that's very, very minuscule. I think that, which is why I'm saying it, it's it's the level of understanding that spectators have because it's a spectator thing. Olympics, if if you put StarCraft on the Olympics, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people that are watching the Olympics are like, "What the heck is going on?" Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand how you could say this guy's talented. I don't even know what he's doing. But anybody yeah. can look at a guy running really fast that's and be like, "Holy dogs. crap, that guy's really fast." That, that's true. That's another thing. You the the if it is a spectator, I mean, the thing is they're so different. I just think that they're so different that putting esports in the Olympics wouldn't work. And that's another thing. Of course. People don't know how StarCraft works. They're not going to watch it. 
Yeah, anybody knows how 100 meter dash works. If someone doesn't know how football works, they're not going to watch a football game. The people who are watching esports are people who are who understand the game in question, or at least are willing to learn. Mm -hmm. That's a, I think that's a good point because you know StarCraft is complex. Um, Even something like a fighting game is complex. Like I'm still, I hear people say lip juggle mind game all those things like chip damage you know all these all these terms that are active in the community so the olympics are a little bit more universal to understand like you just know how to throw a shot put or something like that i just think that the reason that we shouldn't include esports into the olympics is just the physical and mental demands between the two are just way too different. Mm-hmm. It's not. I think it has nothing to do with the demands. It's about profits and uh, spectator. Well, it's, well, it's I about mean, sports kind of have their own Olympics. That's why we have different conventions. Yeah, that's that why we have DreamHack and you know the, the, the that's really it. That's all I can think of. DreamHack <laughs> and I guess Penny Arcade you Expo. People do this stuff. You know, there's there's competitions over in South Korea. There's p- competitions in China. You know, they, they have, have their own competitions place. at huge conventions like BlizzCon and MAGFest. There's just they they have their own places. As far as like specifically for that, they you know BlizzCon. That's where all that stuff just takes off. South Korea is the like hub of that's the East Sports Ground Zero. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's uh. Do I think, you know, I do think that, you, you know, like any game, you need to, you need practice, you need training, and you need different skill sets to be good in esports. And uh, you know, th- this is an interesting discussion because a lot of people think, you know, should esports be in the Olympics? Is esports even a sport? Right. I'm like, well, it well, is. Well, do we sport. have to really say that it applies to this word? Can we say that it's competitive? team-based gains of follow, <laughs> yeah, follower, you know, fulfills it's a sport. Applications of a sport. It's a sport. I don't care how you define the word sport. It's, it's yeah, people it's, like to argue what it's is a, a thing. sport and what is a game. Like, can you use those interchangeably? Well, they call like, sports games game. though. The f- yeah. Like soccer game, football game. <laughs> no, no, let's go watch the football sport. <laughs> the football you know? sport. Like, like chess sport. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. in, in all seriousness, I think you can use those terms interchangeably. You know, they're, they're a little awkward to use and some, you know, some work better in certain situations than other. But by definition, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. Game and sport. Would you like a jolly sport? <laughs> so, I, I think we I, can I, kind This of... is the point that I'm trying to make, Nora, is it does not matter in the slightest what the actual definition of a sport is. Nobody cares at all. What matters is the impact that the game has. It has a viewership. It has competitive teams playing against each other. It doesn't matter what the actual definition of a sport yeah, is. Definitions change. Sport does not require physical exertion. Why else do we have e-sports? Yeah. Be careful not to apply um, ideas to language too much because they're two separate things. Mm-hmm. And society has greatly changed compared to the definitions of some things. When you look at when sports was written as a definition, computers weren't around. We're not arguing against the dictionary. We just we're just saying we don't care. <laughs> Do you remember when you well the, the dictionary can you know there are a lot of dictionaries have different definitions of sports. But remember when you were like in the kid in the 90s and you had a VCR, you did not call them VHS tapes. You called them videos or you called them tapes or uh, video tapes. True. Now that we have DVDs and other forms of video, we call them VHS tapes. When the DVD came out, we had to call them VHS tapes. When we were before yeah. the DVD, we just called them videos. That's how language, you know, because when it first came out, when, when VHS first came out, you called them VHS. Then when everyone had a VCR, you called them videos or tapes. And then when DVDs come out, you call them VHS again. Yeah. 
No, that, that that's true. Uh, yeah, esports does fill the gap compared to sports. Um, it, it it does, and people have tried to just. Uh, I don't want to say placated, but placated to society based on the fact of calling something a sport and calling something an eSport. I mean, they really have. Um, now, something like, I imagine we, we all can agree, though, at that point, helpful and harmful is all based on moderation. How far the player themselves takes it, not mm -hmm. so much based on dedication or based on what they do, like, whether it be professional or casual, but their level in which they spend. Yeah, it, it could easily become addicting, these competitive right. games. Um, so that brings me down to what about casual competitions? Like two friends on a couch playing a fighting game. Or... Oh, that's great. Oh, that's bonding. Well, what, are we, what are we... What, what We're are talking we? like Smash. Like okay, Smash Brothers so or... What are we arguing? Hmm? Helpful, helpful? A helpful, the, harmful. Are you saying, like, does that count as, like... No. No, we're just saying, is that helpful, harmful? Is that helpful, harmful? Because, I mean, you could have two... It's helpful until you play Mario Kart with your friends. <laughs> oh, this is true. That anymore. It's helpful until you forget to strap on the Wii <laughs> strap, you know. Nah, I, I, I'm just kidding. I, then it I, can get dangerous. The, the people who I grew up with in high school are some of my best friends, and we would routinely go, you know, hang out and play video games all night. We had this, we had this one, you know, I probably talked about, we had this one stupid, um, I don't know if you know, Shogu, we had this one stupid Halo mode that we made by complete accident, where he's like, okay, we are going to turn off shields, Increase game speed to the max. Turn off the gravity. Only snipers. <laughs> no other weapons. Uh, only a few grenades. The biggest level that we can find. And uh, just see what happens. So basically, we have all, you see us, and we're holding just sniper rifles. We're flying around this map at high speed flying through the air trying to shoot each other and the only way that we could really kill each other is if we ran into each other meleeed each other and just clotheslined each other it is this stupid garbage bullshit mode that we love we were originally going to call it spider-man but one of us misspelled the i for a j and we just kept it in. we I actually tried playing this mode with someone online and they were not happy <laughs> Because it's a stupid idea, but I think that I like friendly competition more than real competition. I like being able, even if, you know, I, I go like, we do trollish things to each other. We play Smash, we play Mario Kart, we play, um, so, you know, <laughs> I usually rage when I lose, but I'm losing. So, you know, my, my friends can feel fine about that there. I think that is fine. Because that's competition. You want to be able to win. I'm actually probably the best at Smash out of my friends um, most of the time. Sometimes stupid bullshit happens and then cheat. Mm -hmm. But nah, but I, that's the best kind of competition to me because it's people you know, it's people you like, it's people that you can trash talk without them getting offended. Nice. I, I so think that's, I, that's a fun way to. to socially interact i guess there's a place for both of them uh i've done a lot of the same exact friendly competition kind of stuff you know i've played smash with my friends and i'm the best at smash in my circle of friends and i'm sure i'm better than you and so <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's the friendly competition and that's great and that's fun and then there's also like serious competition and I think the problem arises when people fail to draw the line between the two. When somebody's too serious in a friendly competition or someone's too trolly in a serious competition. That's a good point. That's when salt levels rise, you know, in, in either case. And so it's good that you see a difference between the two. Because some people I play serious competition with on League of Legends decide it's fun competition. And then they just run into the enemy team like, -da 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 -da, we're having fun. <laughs> and... It's, that's not fun for me because the kind of fun I have with those games, the serious competition, is 
out playing my opponents. The serious competition. Like serious winning right. a competition against my opponents. It's not about the playing, it's about the winning. That's fun in that case. Now, even looking at friendly competition, I can see it being more helpful than harmful, but still with the tendencies of harmful. Um, there's a couple games out there that I know, like Mario Party, that is called the Friend Breaker. <laughs> and it's usually not serious. It's well, usually, usually, I've never seen it be serious. I, I actually see. I was beat as a kid, not by my parents. But by my sister, who was three years older than me, because we played Mario Party all the time, <laughs> and she would she was very physical when she was you know seven years old, and that was four. <laughs> and so I guess it can be harmful in that way, but it's not really harmful because we're still great friends. Yeah, but I, I, it is more helpful than I think harmful, and a point that I I do want to make, and actually as Pat said, it depends on your friends. I think it's also the environment that kids are growing up in now that there is that gray area. There's no friendly competition with a lot of things unless it's you are sitting down on a couch with friends. Um, there's not a defined line to say, hey, this is what's helpful and this is what's harmful. You get kids that, like my nephews, that play Call of Duty against each other, and suddenly it turns into an all-out riot in the house between the two of them because, you camped me! You were looking at my bottom screen! <laughs> Stupid stuff like that. Ugh. Right, yeah. but that's what I mean, though, is when it becomes harmful because, and honestly, I want to put that not necessarily on the kids, but on the environment, on the parents, say, or they didn't step in and say, hey, look, this is a friendly game. The screen's there. He's going to look at it, play around it. Right. Like... They don't They don't use it <clears throat> to their advantage. Like, they don't kind of implement it in any good light. And then mm. you get kids that are now on Xbox 360 oh, or gosh. Xbox One who they're 12 years old or younger and they're trash talking another team so at that point again it's environmental like you don't have regulations you don't have people that step in and go hey look this is no longer like useful this is harmful because those kids are going to grow up looking at esports and looking at even just sports in general as being this hostile environment because they're so used to the community feedback that they get playing these games. I think that the, the problem is that the, the worst things are always the loudest. I would say about 5% of the League of Legends competitive community is rude or or trolly or whatever word you want to use but they're the ones that are always the loudest and they're the ones always causing trouble and so you think oh my gosh i have a person like this again right you know and you never step back and look oh i have four people that aren't like this right you know so it's always gonna have that problem that's that's just a problem with with life uh and yet the, the environmental thing, uh, it's important that people learn sportsmanship Yeah. when they're doing these things, practice sportsmanship. That way it's more fun for everybody. Uh, Kenny makes a point. Isn't that true for all sports though? Gym class for most kids was torture. Uh, what are we talking about? That? Um. Let's just even use the example of dodgeball. Huh. I was good at dodgeball in school. That was the only thing I was good at in gym class. I but sucked at it. Fuck you, stupid kids. Ex exactly. <laughs> Thank you for proving my point. Or the point. Or a point. 
like you, you get sucked at everything else in gym class. You get people closet. who, or kids rather, at the, playing in gym that even though it is, I do want to say a healthy environment. School should be a healthy environment. It should be a useful environment. Um, they still get pelted in the face with a dodgeball and get laughed at, and then they don't want to play sports. And they don't want to play games because of that torture as being a kid and going through freaking dodgeball. Like, I remember being that kid who hid behind everyone else. Um, and was like, I, I or I would just turn around. I would stand, like, to my back to the team and be like, just hit me because I want to sit down. I, I was the kid that wasn't very good at the game, but I was dedicated. Because, you know, there's, like, the no headshots rule. Yeah. And I let to throw the ball at people's heads. Well, sometimes it would hit my face, you know? Mm -hmm. It hit my face really freaking hard because these people play baseball. Yeah. I fall on the ground like, ow, that hurt. Pick up the ball and throw it back. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not out, right? Because it hit my face. Okay, let's keep going. Like, uh -huh. but, but yeah, no. H helpful and harmful, I, I think, is actually getting a little bit worse in society as... As it's video crazy. games and online gameplay kind of become more of a thing for younger generations. Um, I, I think you can really control your environment too. You can very easily make a an unhealthy environment where people are very angry at each other into a healthy one where people are understanding. I've done it millions of times and sometimes you have to do that to win your game. You have yeah. to bring people to understand each other in like two minutes because you're about to lose. <laughs> you know, you have to quickly make people more sportsmanlike and then push forward with it. And it's possible. Humans are humans. But most people see the saltiness and either hit the ignore button or salt right back. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem lies. Um, also, another example of turning an unhealthy environment into a healthy environment. Um, when my nephews were younger, they used to mute like the... The games. Um, As they should if they're like young, you know. Yeah. Lots and of language. <clears throat> if they played online, they had no sound whatsoever. No sound. Um, they did not play with a headset on. No sound. Um, it, it's kind of like at that point, it's helpful, but it's not necessarily helpful in the way that they are taught then how to deal with it. They are not mm -hmm. taught the skill level which you need to take that two-minute turnaround and, and turn the, the salt into good. Just like kind of the the, the they're just kind sportsmanship. Of, yeah, Pat makes a good point, and that's the the largest problem is the the parenting and the supervision when these things are happening, and you know kids grow up with these very angry mindsets. Kids are going to be kids, and they're going to get angry and yell, and if they don't get their way, mm -hmm. that's something we know. But it's up to the parents to slap them in the wrist and be like, hey, be nice. But people are using these competitive, angering games as a babysitting service. And they're not being supervised while they're doing these things. And there's no control over the kids. Then they grow up to be adults that are still kids. Yeah, it's true. Um, so stepping away from what we would consider as esports. Um, Let's talk about MMOs and raid environments. Um, this is going to be interesting because, Alex, I think you've really only had like a third party perspective of this, right? So, I've I'm, I'm going to have you go first then, Alex. Me? Okay. Yeah. Well. As being the third party, um, what have you heard? Like, what, what is your experience of competitive rating, like the progress, progression rating, from an outside point of view? I don't even want to say helpful or harmful, but positive or negative. It really depends on if you like that kind of stuff or not. Um, yeah, I, I really haven't been looking at this from, you know, and, you know I, I, this has been very passive to me. I've just been hearing things that you do and things that other people do. Well, how so, do you view it? Like what, what is competitive rating as you see it? 
define it as if a little kid just asks you what is well, rating competitive rating seems like you know you have a team a party and you are competing as to who can complete a raid the fastest and most efficiently i don't know if that's right or not i could be wrong um i guess it's a uh, I mean, I don't know how it would be judged, but I think uh, do I think that's a cool idea? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of the same level of any other sort of competitive game. You know, if you have a team based thing, you know, it's a clan in Halo, if you have a you know sort of a team for your league games, it's I think that that works the same way. Um, that's really all I gotta say on that. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's really that different from anything else I've seen as far as team-based competition in games. I think it's just as welcome and integral to the ecosystem as all the others are. So you and I have a completely different idea, like perspective of this. Uh, I've, I've only dabbled. I won't say I've done a whole lot of it. I've done more than. The average but i i haven't like really delved into it but from what i see there's like two types of competition in in rating right first of all there's the individual competition like this popular raid group needs a tank there are seven thousand tanks on our server why should you be our tank there's individual competition in there as as far as like time committed to gearing and knowing the mechanics and being able to deal with people and lead your group. And then there's also like the group level competition. I don't really see it as um, who can do it the most efficient, but as far as I know, the competition and rating is who can get the world first. Like who can down this boss the first in the world after its release. And that's after like 36 hour marathons of sitting here and gearing up and getting ready and going. As far as I know. Um, so you would say you've been more of a casual raider? Yeah, I was okay. a casual raider. I completed raids. I completed high level raids. Not fast. Not well. <laughs> right. I did it though. So looking at it as, as, as just an overall positive, negative, har helpful, harmful, pros and cons, the, the overall, we're not going to really define it too much. Um, because I think getting into something that has a massive group complex as what rating is, I don't want to even consider it like on the same, not so much the same level as a sport, because I mean, t it's technically a sport, but it's not PVP. It's player versus environment. Um, so it's like shot put. It's like shot put. Yeah. Who can throw this rock the furthest? Right, exactly. That's environment. Um. <laughs> Hello, Badger. Hello, Badger. Thanks. Thanks, by the way. Just want to say thanks. Jeez. Oh, but I am awake now, so I guess you can just randomly hurt me PJ. on Terraria or Twitch, Twitch Aria. Same difference. Speaking of competitive gaming, what the heck is Twitaria and how are people getting competitive with it? I, all it is to me is Twitter spam. <laughs> it, it, it's Twitter spam. It really is. But, okay, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. As, as anything, people want to show numbers. People want to prove that they're better than everyone else, whether it be from a simple level as cookie clicker or clicker heroes by saying, I have more I, clicks than you. I have 19 <laughs> tetrillion cookies per second. Like, right. <laughs> look how great I am. So at that point, you give anyone that single number that says level, like people are going to get competitive and you implement PVP 
it's then going to become competitive based on how many times I killed you or how many things I've collected. And there are people that just completely stay away from it. They just go, you know what? This isn't for me. And you get people like, well, Badger and I, who have been going back and forth attacking each other for the last day. Like, and all I see is hashtag pew pew. Like, <laughs> what is this and why do I care? Why are you tweeting this at me? <laughs> uh, right. But I, I, did, I did attack you first, Badger. I did. It's true. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of think at that point, me and Badger have a friendly level of competition. We have, whether I pushed it on him or whether we're both kind of pushing at each other, there is that friendly level of competition where we can joke about it. Like, oh, how did you die? Oh, I died this way. How did, how did I hit you? I hit you this way, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean... At that point, it becomes something that is then a com communication more than it is like, oh, you attacked me? What? Like, it becomes, it becomes at that point negative. Um, Irish. Hello, Irish. How are you? Anyway, um, sorry. MMOs, what, what were you saying? About rating? Yeah. Um, so, again, with anything, moderation. Yes. Anything. Moderation. There is good level rating, and then there is bad level rating. And I just noticed that people don't really see when I go like this. They just see my arms are, like, off the screen. Um, I, like, my, my window ends, like, right here. <laughs> so we're, like, little squares that, like, these big... Hee 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 So... So it does. So it ha just has so happens to be my birthday. A special shout out for you. Well, you could have just said it's your birthday, and I would have been like, Irish, happy birthday. But now that you're like, do I get a special shout out? No. Today's your birthday. Then happy freaking birthday to you. <laughs> Damn it, Shibo. Happy birthday. <laughs> Irish, that was Shibo. You're not actually banned. You're just timed out for like one second. <laughs> but um. When when it, it it's good, I'm actually gonna go with the good before the bad because I like going good before bad. And the ugly. And <laughs> the good part about rating, I would have to say, is the team building skills. Um, if I scroll up in chat, there was a a situation where Kenny said he read or read. It did say red, but he read, <laughs> read led, um, mm -hmm. before in in EQ. Um, and he should be able to put it down on his resume as leadership. Honestly, I think he should. Like that's one of those Absolutely. things. Absolutely, like guild leading too. Like seriously. <laughs> right, because <laughs> I know <laughs> he's like lead <laughs> instead of red, <laughs> but um. <laughs> It literally is a developmental skill that I think is very helpful. It's one of those things that I would have to say there's two things in life that you should do to become a better person. One, waitressing or waitering. Like working in... Or just food business, working with people. Waiting, like waiting on people, whether it be food business, cooking, or like serving. Serving side a little bit more just in general, because that's more people skills than cooking. Because cooking, you deal with one person. You technically, you deal with like two people. Oh yeah, I mean like front end. Yeah, food. but front end food, <clears throat> I think people should do, and it it it. Helps people develop. Two. Playing a MMO. To the level of having a group or a guild. It doesn't matter if you're raiding. It doesn't matter if you're doing dungeons. But having the 
here is my group of people. Here is the group of people. Yes, I, I would say that you should raid or you should do dungeons just to get that organization, to get the teamwork aspect. Better than playing, say, Call of Duty where it's 5v5. And yeah, it's you really have... one versus one versus one versus one versus one versus one. Because I mean, yeah. Until you get into competitive play, you just queue up alone and and kill people alone. Right, but it's five people point, all killing five people alone. You don't learn so much the teamwork aspect of it. You learn how do I kill the other person quicker, or better, or stuff like that. Like it has at that point the kind of the negative of where. Dungeons, you have to work as a team. Any game that has the triad, the trinity. The, the tank healer, the DPS. Tank healer, DPS. Yeah. I think people should play. Because you get to learn how to work with a tank. You get to learn how to work with your DPS. You get to learn how to work with your healers. In, In any real life business, you got tanks, healers, and DPS. It's true. It's one hundred percent true. So, at that point, when you look at something as complex as rating, you're looking at ten to twenty-five to forty people. It's been a little while, right? <clears throat> at that point, you're working at a team level. You are whether you be a raid leader, a guild leader, or a player. You're learning how to cooperate. You're learning fundamentals that are rather military-oriented. If you look at it, raiding is very military-oriented. You have your front lines, you have your back lines. You have the people who are in charge. You have the people that are the, the soldiers. Listen to orders. Right. It teaches you how to be able to cooperate in a group environment. And I think that is extremely helpful. I've met kids who have played World of Warcraft, have been on one of two sides. The PvP trolls, or they are very well organized because they do dungeons and they've raided. Now you can have your trolls that raid, that's... I mean, eh, that doesn't really happen. But it doesn't. As soon as happen. someone's a troll, they're no longer a raider. Right. <laughs> like, get out of our raid group. But that's that's one of those things where it's like PvP trolls and raiders. Now, when we talk about an MMO situation, and you talk about PvP, let's look at five v five. That's the same environment as dealing with Call of Duty and all that kind of stuff. Now, you can get the groups that work well together. You can get the 3v3s, the 5v5s that work well together and that have that organization and have the ability to have the critical thinking and on their toe thinking and work together. But how rare is that compared to raiding? The raids clearly have a higher level of coordination compared to any other. Um, I mean, even your typical raid, even like a non-competitive raid, seems to demand more coordination than even a professional esports Call of Duty team or even something more team-based like Counter-Strike. I just think I think that's that's what sets raids above anything else as far as the competitive stuff. No, I see what you're trying to get at. Let me just say that very competitive shooters, like Call of Duty and Counter Strike and stuff, when you get actually competitive, you have teams and people with roles and you actually like there's yeah. a lot of strategy right. as a team. But anything before super competitive, I agree. It's like just Run around like a chicken with your head cut off and kill. Call of Duty is not a team based game. I mean, absolutely is. I watched a Call of Duty tournament once. No, like I was on amazed level that the same like Battlefield or Counter Strike. You will not survive in either of those games unless you have a specific plan. Yes, as well as in Call of Duty. Call of Duty compared to Battlefield is is not. Well, let's not compare things. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. 
So, I mean, but raids clearly have a huge, 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 huge demand for coordination. So what Nara said with, we never used any sort of voice, voice coordination. We just did whatever we wanted. Where's the team? Really? Okay. Uh, well, see, it rated battlegrounds are a little bit different. Battlegrounds in World of Warcraft are different from arenas. Arenas, yeah. you you coordinate with your team and oh, kill no, people. I'm not, battlegrounds are basically Call of Duty. Uh, no, I'm not saying that y you had meant any harm by that. I was just kind of reading your words as facts. Go ahead, Shiva. Battlegrounds, to me, when I played them, when I twinked, when I did, when I actually delved into that a bit, it's really just who has the most individually skilled players, just like Call of Duty, right? right? Not, not trying to knock on it, but it's, it's a good comparison to make. Uh, whereas, you know, arenas are, you get people in the correct roles, like League of Legends, and you need them to work together to defeat the other people who have this, the, the corresponding roles. So there's a huge difference there, and that's why Battlegrounds not might not need for voice coordination, because you don't need to really talk to yourself. Just like how Call of Duty, the only voice coordination is, you know, people talking about each other's mothers or something. Now with arenas, they're actual arena teams, you know? Yeah. People will get together with four of the people and say, okay, we need to make an arena team. What characters are we going to roll to do this? And what specs are we going to go? And what's the current meta? And what's beating us? And how can we beat that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As a group. Um, the, the, what Kenny said is 5v5 is micromanaging and raid is more high level managing. I, I can, I understand that 100%, but you can also micromanage raids. And to micromanage 10 player raids, your raid leader literally has to be 100% on par with being able to coordinate to know the fights and i'm, I'm pointing at you because you 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 radiated for me a bit and it was great yeah <laughs> um because you have to be able to be on par you have to know not only the strategy of the game the strategy of each individual player now i'm just remembering the shuffle strategies the sh <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry it's so, it's so true good. it's so good <laughs> go on um so you have to know <laughs> you are now fuzzy, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, the level of each individual player. Now, can this is this a good relative to real life? Not really. He, it, what we're saying though with this is that it's a good building block. It's not something you can take par to par with real life, but it's. It's something that can it's comparable. help. It, it's comparable, but it's not. But it's not exactly. mirroring. Yeah. yeah, it's not mirroring. Absolutely. Um, it builds the skill set, but not the skills. Then following instructions from a single entity. So it's not true team build. No, that is not true. A team it, needs a leader. Um, well, it's true and not true running. based on how far and what you do. Um... It takes a lot of team, true team building, I would say, would be your raids that have been together for years. Same people for years. That's happened. I mean, um, he, that he doesn't believe raiding for the players has any benefit other than following, like, while I can understand the importance of a leader, there's there still needs to be a lot of coordination between the individual players a raid is basically a leader follow situation not true i can give one example of that one example of that was when i was raiding and i was doing deathwing and we were going to take down deathwing and we had a pug group there was not a single raid leader what you had to do as an individual player was call out when you were CCing, when you were moving, what you were doing as a player. And everybody had to know the fight and, and why these things were significant. everyone 
had to be able to coordinate. We did not have a single leader calling out. We did not have a single leader telling us when to move and what to do. It's the same situation as any sort of sports team. There still is a team captain mm -hmm. who, you know, does a lot of the overarching planning. But if the other players can't coordinate with each other to at least some degree, you're not going to have anything. That's the that there is a similarity. I mean, raids demand a lot of coordination from all of the media that I've seen and from all of the descriptions that you guys have told me. You just well, Nari is saying that's not what we were talking about. That's actually exactly what we were talking about, but just yeah, right. an extreme to prove a point. You could also go back to the well, raids no, that have been together for three years. Pug wasn't. We had four raid groups. We had group one, group two, group three, group four. We had four raid groups at the time. What we did was we took essentially two or three people from each of those groups. And we made a pickup group. Pick up group is what pug is called. It doesn't have to be pugs as in outside clan, outside yeah. guild. Pick up a group. Um, they were all followers. If you want to go by leader and followers, they were all followers. They were all the crappiest of the crappiest of those four groups. And the reason they did that, the reason they did that was so that we could learn individual teamwork. Mm -hmm. That we could be better raiders because with anything, your weakest link is your weakest player. Your weakest structure for any guild is your weakest player. You strengthen your weakest player, your overall strength goes up. It's not based on, okay, we have five really good top players. That's how strong our guild is. No, you're as strong as what your weakest is. And so that's what they did was we took essentially from those four groups and we took the lowest of the low and they said, look, you guys are going to go raid. You guys, crap. You're nothing. I dropped give me 20. That's, <laughs> that's literally, you, yeah, raids, you can literally memorize your role and do repetitive actions. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about, though. We are talking about the dynamics of having it as a group. Um, and learning raids. And learning we're, raids. We're talking about competitive raids. I did, I did casual raids. Where you can look up guides and then do what the guide says. Right. That's not important and barely competitive. <laughs> you can sit down for 50 hours. Anybody can hit the four buttons you need to press to go through a raid in your role. It's really just time commitment. At that yeah. Point. Now, I, I, can, I completely understand. Nara is playing devil's advocate to the topic. I completely mm -hmm. understand that. Um, and everything he says versus everything anyone else would said, that's true. You cannot compare mere from rating to leadership positions. However, I can tell you straight up from my personal experience as being a raid leader and dealing with guilds and then also dealing with the player position. I could walk into a meeting and feel more comfortable. And that's what we are talking about not necessarily that i could get up there and lead that meeting but it's the building blocks you can be a better team player i could be a better team player just from even learning hey i i've started at the lowest of the low i started a i i i did a three-year resume like three year resume for rating i started at the lowest the low and the only way i worked up was by learning and by getting in with teams and getting in with guilds and learning how the guilds were because even then you have to go individual strategy based on class and then when you look at what class people are playing that's personal preference so i know shibo is going to be a healer I know that out of anything, he's going to play a buff healer. That says a lot about his personality. He's more capable at looking at a full party. He's ca more capable at overall looking at more people than me as a single target healer. 
When I walk into a room, I'm going to find the person I need to heal. Shiba is going to look around the room and be like, okay, what's going on? He's going to be able to survey a room better than I would as being a single target healer. And that's not just from raiding. What I'm saying, though, is in everyday life. Would you disagree or would you agree? Oh, I agree. I, I agree. I am a a party healer in real life. Right. Um, in, in fact, that's a lot of what I do at work is uh, I party heal. I mean, there's, there's really nothing nothing more to say there. I, I look at the situation and then I fix the little problems that are going on and I make sure everything's running smoothly. Right. So, I mean, you look, looking at that, like, you're going to look at people who are tanks. Look at people who are tanks. That's actually a really good aspect. Look at people that have mentality to play tanks in inside a game. They're going to have the mentality outside of game to kind of take one for the team. Kind of also the tank. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I, just, I'm just talking about specific specifics like you yeah I, you can yeah. multi-class all day long I mean, you've, just... you've, you've also got the the tank in the work environment which is just your front end right you know the people taking the brunt of the customers and people complaining at them and it's all their fault right you know so, so no like i think we kind of div went on a tangent away from the point but it's still <laughs> no, i think we're still on you know, we went on. to raid teamwork applying to real life skills yeah. Good. Not necessarily competitive gaming, but close enough. It's still a good topic. See, I don't... See, it's all based on your experience, Nara. I don't believe raids actually teach you to be a team. That's based on your experience. Go watch Kuroko No Basket. This is a perfect example. Perfect fucking example. Kuroko No Basket. Well, it's the basketball. basketball which Kuroko plays. In that anime it's a sports anime it's a basketball anime what ends up happening is you have the generation of miracles i think is what they're called they have the best of the best they played individually they were a team uh actually badger you can tell me what the name is because well we're obsessed so yay um but you have them they are five people who individually played the game they were out for themselves and they played the game no they do not know what teamwork is at all well they kind of do because kuroko passes to this person this person dunks this person is then gonna pass the shooter but in the anime they said whoever has the ball is the person who scores they were out for themselves then you have where kuroko is now with this team and you have an actual team work you have Kroku who passes to the ace. You then have the center who actually is doing all of the, the defense. Then you have the sharpshooter and the eagle eye. I mean, you have them who work together. And the way that they're winning is by working together. What you... S yes? Go ahead. I'm just, just when, when you're done. No, go ahead. I, I'm okay. I remember. Um, on, on the, I don't believe raids actually teach you to be a team, a, another wonderful example, anime is so great for so many things. Right, um, I know. Go watch Log Horizon. Mm -hmm. They raid multiple times, semi-realistic raids, this is how raids kind of go, and yeah. it shows the teamwork, and they, they form together as a team and as a community and as a family. And that's kind of pretty much how it goes in real life. You know, it's, except, you know, you're not stuck in the game. But it's pretty much the same and it's correct yeah but what i'm saying though is when you look at this case situation i've dealt with this and this the selfish players i've dealt with so many selfish players we're gonna call the bald fist selfish players and then you actually have a team what you're talking about with not getting teamwork is those selfish players that are out to get the gear for themselves. They don't give a shit who the next person is. They don't all they care about is their DPS. They care about being top of the charts. But now you're bringing into a sports team is basically... Yeah, so when you look at it, it's two different situations. 
this situation is what we're talking about to building and teaching te teamwork. The question is though, do you teach teamwork? It depends, again, playing casual, playing rating, playing comp competitive, it's all based on the environment. It's all based on the good or bad environment. Whether you get in a 5v5 and it, you with your friends and it becomes the best thing ever, or whether you get the troll in the leagues. That's what we're saying. Like, you are looking at a specific point. We're looking, well, I specifically am looking at the overall. Like, we're talking about the, the case situation where you have that team that has been together, that guild, that raid that has been together for years. I raided with the same team in World of Warcraft for three years. I then also raided in subgroups in other raids that they would just be like, do this, do this, okay, do this. And they wouldn't even say anything. I'd be like, I'm oom, so what? Should've watched your man better. Should've watched your man better. <laughs> What, healers, why is the tank dying? I don't care. Get the tank up. Who who cares? Oh, okay. So we're gonna look at gear and we're gonna give it to our uh, our guild leader. Um, he, we're gonna give it to the guild leader's girlfriend. I don't care. You need it. We're gonna give give it to our favorites. Or you have the group that goes. Okay, healers, are you good on mana? Like, are you sure you're good on mana? Okay. So, uh, oh, by the way, like, healers, the reason this tank took damage was because of this. Uh, next time round, maybe you should do hots. Maybe you should put a little bit more bubbles on them. Um, DPS, a little low, but here's why. Or if someone's having a call out and they go, oh, shit, I, sorry, I, I blew my cooldown. They're like, oh, that's no problem. DPS, three. You got cooldown rotation this time. DPS 2, wait till next turn. That's what I mean by teamwork. Compared to... Well, I don't give a shit. Oh, we wiped. It's all your fault. Like... Because I met team players in the game, the game must have caused them... No, we're not saying to cause. It's saying the building blocks. Your argument... Okay, actually, I'm getting pretty heated with this right now because the Ar Nara's argument is, is pretty well just like... But that's not what we're saying with the game... Let's move on. ...causing them to be team players i'm saying that it is a building block that could potentially make situations a better team it gives people social in interaction to be a team player and if you disagree with that that's fine you're wrong we can move on <laughs> like you just don't have the same experience that other people have had. Your rating experience has been very solo and non-dedicated. However, some of us have had rating experience that is more team-oriented, in which we have actually built teamwork and coordination. He's just literally baiting out the could potentially, not saying it would. Oh, fuck that. Fuck the could potentially thing. Anything could potentially anything. When I said about the two things that people should do, mm -hmm like waitressing and mmo rating like that's what i'm talking about getting into a team getting into a raid situation getting into that so not he... just playing the fucking game because you can play world of warcraft and never get into a dungeon never get into a fucking raid or you can raid like me and never really build a team right you can casual raid I'm talking about getting into that perspective where you have the competitive rating team. So what you're saying is that you can build a team mentality 
outside of World of Warcraft and it can benefit you in World of Warcraft and vice versa. Right. Well, yeah, yeah obviously, of course that can happen. If anybody That's disagrees it. with that, then you, you no need to be devil's advocate. Just just agree with it and move on. <laughs> well, no, they can be devil's advocate and they can prove the point, their own point. That's fine. They can be devil's advocate and be wrong. But what I'm like, the potential of what I was saying, potential of what I was saying. Nara just completely just went, here's the legalities. Here's the technical terms. Here's the definitions. Fuck you, Nara. <laughs> I, I, like, it's the same deal as being like, I became a good leader, you know, a good politician by being the leader of my, I don't know, like, local grocery club. store. <laughs> I mean, the, the concepts that you learn in these things can affect others. Like you can be a team player from a raid because there is coordination. And maybe if you're a good enough leader, maybe you can lead something outside of the digital world too. It's entirely possible. It's yeah. not uncommon that the big guild leaders are also big company leaders. Well, yeah, it's a potential. You see that a this, lot. Isn't, this isn't an A to B situation because everybody's different and everybody processes information differently. Everybody has different lives. Well, that's what... And we're not trying to make a proof. We're having a conversation. Yeah, we're not trying to create this new th sociological theory. We're just trying to say that <laughs> well, things actually, that you I'm gonna... game can affect how you do in real life positively. Remember, and actually, Shibo, you said mirror. When I said that it is something that can compare. I know, I said not mirror. And not mirror. That goes, I quote, with Nara saying it came to me at least that you were equating rating to building team skills. It does. It can compare, but it cannot near. Rating absolutely builds team skills. Yes, it can. And that's where it says it can. When and that's up to the player. If yeah. you don't want it to build team skills, then it won't. If you work on your team skills in a raid, then it will build team skills and that will apply elsewhere. And honestly, right now is a good example of competitive. No. Huh? Yeah. Between me and Nara. Yeah, it's competitive. I think it's just between Nara and reality. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at it, I saw an opportunity, and this actually solidifies this entire fucking episode. Oh, is this the end? Anyway, go on. 20 minutes, 15 uh, technically minutes till the end. Okay. Um, I took an opportunity where I saw that I had to prove a point. He saw an opportunity where he had to prove a point. And when debates get anywhere near heated, think of it, I, well, I at least think of it as competitive. Debates can be very competitive. Mm hmm. It no longer turned into a discussion as much as competitive. And this is where it went to unhealthy. This is unfortunately the downfall of being the resident troll and no one takes Nara seriously. No, we did take you seriously. We had a discussion with you. This when, you're being, when you're being that pedantic, I will never take you seriously. <laughs> when you're trying to quote the Oxford definition of a sport in your argument that's, that video games are not sports, I will not take you seriously it's because there's a huge layer of it that you're missing. You need to learn about semantics. And because actually, words I'm... are symbols. They represent certain things, even if the dictionary says they're different. I am very happy, on a side note, completely side note, that I decided to put chat on this episode. Why? Because so you, the everyone discussion, the discussion, discussion yeah. when this gets put anywhere, whether it be VOD or YouTube, people can see what the chat discussion is. You can see and what our, what we're addressing, yeah. And see what we're addressing. Yeah, let's um, just get rid of get rid of Josh and and Garth and Jeremy forever. <laughs> and nah, I'm just kidding. I love those guys. <laughs> you can't really debate when one has moderation power over another because they'll just purge and ban and walk away. Not true because both Chibo and Nara. <laughs> have moderators so they can't purge or ban each other only i have echo the power. chamber echo chamber <laughs> it's a conspiracy 
It's a conspiracy to silence discussion. No. <laughs> Point proven. <laughs> <laughs> but no. And actually, that's where it became unhealthy. It could have been friendly banter between me and Nara and being like, well, no, you're wrong. Instead, I got heated and it became unhealthy. I think one or it both of the participants, unhealthy. one or both of the participants became closed minded and assumed they were correct and wanted to prove the other one wrong, like, instead of being open-minded about the situation. So, yeah. It, 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 all in all, it does justify the, the, com the complexity of what is competitive, and whether it, it be a verbal game, or a video game or mental games or sports games. You know, one of the most important books in relation to conflict in general is Sun Tzu's Art of War, which has been used not just by military experts, but by team captains, by business leaders. It just teaches you all these things about just interacting with people in the act of conflict in general. So there's a lot of complexities to discussion to debate to who's gonna win because, oh my God, as a communications graduate, I know a lot about how debate and how argument works, especially in the digital sphere. And to reel it back a bit to competitive gaming, when, and we're saying the line between friendly banter and heated debate, mm -hmm. the line between friendly competition and true competition, Mm -hmm. and where it gets blurred the anger can come when one person crosses over to the other one and the other one's not quite ready for example if i were playing smash that. with my friends and i'm at a competitive level and i'm way too good for them i can't lower my skill i need to find that picture of um uh, online interaction where it's like um good neutral evil and then lawful neutral chaotic oh yeah so the like you see the uh lawful uh evil and he's like grenade launchers are a part of the game i should you know i can use them if they're there and then there's the chaotic good where he's like i'm gonna teabank the fuck out of you fucking <laughs> and then there's just the true neutral which is just a stoic face saying nothing which is me when i play on just killing people <laughs> he's just like now could alignments have a play in competitive what? Speaking of alignment. Do we have the time for this? We got like five minutes. We got three minutes. Okay, now technically we got more than that. But could it? Oh, of like, course. Yes. To people's that question, alignment? Yes. That, that's what you were talking about, by the way, it's in the chat. That's pretty, yes, yes. I posted that on top I love that thing. <laughs> That is, that is, yeah. That's that is, that is completely accurate. That's completely accurate. And I'm that guy in the middle. <laughs> I like to laugh a bit. If you keep swearing, I'm going to have okay, to report sorry. you. <laughs> How do I crouch? Uh, that's funny. I, I think that's pretty accurate as to just chaos and, and um, order are two different things. Yeah, Nara, That's you can't, really good. Nara, you can't go on Tumblr because you're a white cishet male or whatever, and you're going to get crucified or just verbally abused. Yeah, probably. Actually, if you know a good place, usually the Tumblr people are like just good artists. I mean, like, you sidestep. Nara's worst. probably at work. Well, go to Tamblegram. Alex gets it. Never mind. But yeah, no, all in all this. Nara's at home. Okay. Nara at home. Well, that's rare. Such science. <laughs> For science. Oh, excuse me. That didn't even science. <laughs> uh, 
but on, honestly though, I think we had a pretty good discussion. Any any closing arguments, any closing debates, questions, comments, concerns? Not really. I'm wondering if when when people are good enough, can everybody enjoy true competition? Yeah. Or the people that can only enjoy friendly competition? Some people are not cut out for hardened competition and that's okay you know it's it's the same deal that like some people like that some people don't that's how games work there's so many games you're going to find something for anyone yeah <laughs> Pat. careful with what you say <clears throat> Jason. Oh, we were talking about his. Okay. His. <laughs> dat beef stick, though. His. Hmm. It his? said dat beef stick. You said and his. And then Shiba was like, "Oh, Jason, wait." Is I, I thought Alex was eating. You're eating. Okay. She's eating <laughs> beef stick. She's not talking. To, they're not talking about another beef stick. See, that's or the initial part. thought. Beef sticks, Jason. We are talking about beef sticks. Spicy sausage. Gotta use the mind game. How much time do we have left on this? <laughs> Nine minutes. I thought we had three minutes. So we have to do outros. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was like three, okay. Outros, I have to do an outro? Crazy. Yeah, you gotta say where you are on the internet. All right there. Anyway, we can say that for later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danger ass. But uh, I think that any, I think that you know, some people aren't cut out for hardened competition the same way that you know some people outside the digital sphere aren't cut out to it, and that's okay. That's that's fine. And some people might not even like friendly competition. I like, have trouble enjoying competition without true meaning, I guess. I don't like competition with strangers because usually they're just idiots or they're sore losers. Yeah. But that's I mean, just the environment. Yeah, I mean, when I go into a, <laughs> like a game of Halo and I lose, I know I'm going to lose. So I don't really <clears throat> feel that. That's true. No, I, I. If anyone here actually remembers watching me play Smite Alternative. Play what? Smite Alternative. Oh, yeah. You she really liked Smite. that game. You couldn't get away from that game. Whatever happened to that game? Did you forget about The same about thing that happened that to Arcage. Well, you gave up Smite. Yeah. For Arcage. Uh, technically. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. It was around the same era, wasn't it? It was like yeah. you gave up for ESO again. But you got back with your old flame ESO. Yep, totally. Um, this might not turn You a, couldn't stay apart forever. <laughs> was a good. It was a good environment for friendly competition. That's good. Um. Unless, of course, I was just playing. And then I, I got salty, but I couldn't get verbally salty or like over, I couldn't get overly into it because I was streaming for Smite Alternative. Um, and that right there actually was a good filter. It was a good filter because I was for and take, take it to a friendly environment. Now, if I was streaming on my channel and playing Smite, I'm pretty sure I would have MF'd everyone. And been like, you suck. And gotten way too heated, but because there was that filter on it, it kind of brought me out of that, like, overly aggression. To be, oh, well, no, I have to show a friendly, like, perception of Smite. To keep viewers and to keep... 
people coming and playing. And even when we did like 5v5 team stuff and we were playing against each other, there was good salt. There was actually good salt. There was people that were smash talking each other. And then anytime someone actually got hurt by it, they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. How dare you? <laughs> and then it kind of like brought it brought it back where it wasn't like you had a group of people that understood friendly competition. And I think that's that's the part where it was it was overall a good experience. I remember how Cat never wanted to do customs after a certain someone was overly competitive and got super heated. Right. <laughs> um, so five minutes remaining, we're gonna do our outros, do our where we can find each other and what's going on. Uh, oh, excuse me. So Alex. Uh you can see me on the Twitter and the Tambler. Uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Postus Merrick. Kind of tinkering. I know I saw that gobby and I'm like, what the fuck? Come on. But um, uh, gonna, I'm trying to experiment with a little more topical stuff for my uh, channel, you know, like sort of like news opinion kind of stuff. But uh, on my friend on the other channel that I do with my friend, what the fuck game. We are going to be doing uh, Sonic Booms wrapped up. All the episodes are up. We're probably going to do a highlight reel sometime in the next month or so. Uh, still doing Scott Pilgrim, still doing Banjo Tooie. We have a little bit of a kink with the Banjo Tooie, but we're going to get that fixed right away. And you're going to see a uh, one shot of Mount Your Friends this week on his channel. Please subscribe to that channel that I put in there, please. So that's where all of the Let's Play stuff's going to be. My own single Let's Plays are on hold for now. But, uh, and uh, twitch.tv slash Gaming is where I do uh, streams. Mondays, we're still doing Persona 4. Saturdays, we're still doing uh, Beyond Good and Evil HD. Um, I don't think that my new job is going to be changing any sort of my stream schedules because I do those at night. So uh, that's kind of what's going on. So. Evo. Uh, I, well, I'm here, right? The, the, the here. This is here. This is here. There's here. the Twitter. Yeah. There's the Twitter, and then there's the the Twitch. Yes. And I'm on both of those, and I'm like all over Twitch. I'm like I'm literally everywhere, um, mostly around you know Jack Fear, and and you'll see me in this channel a lot. And I mean, if you need to, if you need to get a hold of me somehow, I mean, Jason got the links there. Twitter's the best way. Um, I'm always around. I'm I'm I'm, I'm playing league. I'm streaming. Every once in a while, it's either some game on Steam or Hearthstone or maybe League of Legends. I don't know. Maybe. I'm really afraid to stream League of Legends. I'm afraid. I'm scared. But it may happen. And that's all. <laughs> and I am, of course, Almir Mail, aka Cat. And as always, you can find the link, the, the stuff below, the Twitter, the YouTube, the Twitch. Um, yeah, I'm here on Twitch, literally Tuesday through Friday. Um, there's a new schedule update where I'm doing the first and third Monday nights over at Jack LaFear's channel for the obligatory conversation, so I won't be streaming Tuesday mornings, um, here every first and third, so you can find me every second and fourth, uh, Tuesday here. Um, other than that, uh, I will be streaming again in another hour. Um, send me all of the things on Twitter so that I can get things for tw Twitteria. Send me conversation. Start conversation on Twitter so I can get more bonus points. Anywho, um, <laughs> we, we've had an amazing discussion. Thank you for stay tuning. And I will be back in an hour for some gameplay. We shall see you later, guys. Bye-bye.